Sharks are super old and super weird. They've been around, in one form or another, for almost 400 million years. They were some of our first predators when our ancestors were but simple backboned, soft-bodied eel beasts. They've survived for so long due to plenty of factors, not least of which is extreme adaptability to just about any niche that exists in the ocean throughout time. They've given rise to some of the largest predators to ever live, as well as the largest filter-feeding gentle giants alive today. A brand new fossil fresh out of Mexico preserves the remains of one more bizarre shark to add to the roster. A shark that really isn't so much a shark as a combination between manta ray and big mouth shark. Meet Aquilolamna. An anonymous quarryman uncovered a slice of rock from the Vallecillo Quarry area of Nuevo León State, northeastern Mexico, in 2012. The fossil was secured, collected, and prepared by Margarito González. The slice of rock containing one big fossil and a few little ones was purchased by Mauricio Garza. Mauricio Fernández Garza is a Mexican politician and businessman, former senator and mayor of Nuevo León, and part of a few wealthy family-owned shady corporations. He's responsible for the acquisition of the remains of the polycotylid plesiosaur, named Mauricio Soros, after him, that preserved soft tissue remains. The new specimen of what appeared to be a really weird shark was purchased in order to assign it an official institutional label and so it could be sent to a museum for study. The museum in question, Museo La Milarca, was not yet built and is scheduled to open this year. The specimen is a slab of limestone rock that probably originates from a big layer of rock called the Agua Nueva Formation. This dates our new fishy friend to the early section of the late Cretaceous period some 90 million years ago. At this time, a shallow inland sea, called the Western Interior Seaway, gouged its way from the Gulf of Mexico to the Arctic Ocean. The slab contains the skeleton of a shark flattened from top to bottom. The shark, as you can see, is absolutely bizarre. Not only did it preserve most elements of its cartilaginous skeleton, but also most of the outline of its body. We have its soft gooey bits. It has your normal shark body, but with a super long tail. It has the head shape of the modern planktivorous megamouth shark, Megachasma pelagios, sticking out of the sides of its torso, which is suspiciously merged with its head section, are a pair of long blade-like pectoral fins. These fins were attached to the body with webs of flesh and globs of muscle. It has your average shark-shaped tail fin, but the fossil seems to be missing the pelvic, anal, and dorsal fins due to the way the fossil is preserved. It remains unclear if the critter really was missing pelvic, anal, or dorsal fins, or if they just fell off before the animal fossilized. The creature was named Aquilolamna milarque, with Aquilo meaning eagle, and lamna meaning shark with the species name Milarque, referring to the new museum in which it will be housed. All told, a new shark looks a lot like modern manta and devil rays, which also sport these long pointy wings, though of course the modern rays have modified theirs into a bit more of a wing shape. The shark is completely unrelated to these planktonic rays, as it lived 30 million years before the latter even evolved. Due to its unique features, it has been placed into its own unique eponymous family, Aquilolamnidae. Beyond that, it has been allied with the Lamniformes order, a very big group containing the mackerel sharks, like the threshers, basking, megamouth, goblin, sand, crocodile, and great white sharks. A relationship more specific than that cannot yet be attributed to our funky, flappy friend here. The specimen of Aquilolamna measures about 4.5 feet, 1.65 meters long, with a 6.2 foot, 1.9 meter wingspan, making it just a medium-sized shark. It's unclear if the shark was a juvenile and would grow much larger, or if this was the largest attainable size for the genus. The skull of Aquilolamna is unfortunately devoid of its teeth. The researchers think this is because they are small and quickly fell out of the head after death to be scattered to the undersea winds. Other fish found in the same layer of rock, namely the sharks Tychodus and Cretoxyrhina, have their teeth preserved front and center. 
However, their teeth range from small to large. This told the researchers that it's probably more likely that Aquilolamna had super small teeth, similar to today's whale shark or basking shark. With teeth like those hypothesized, the wide blunt head and slow inefficient fins, Aquilolamna has been identified as most probably a filter feeder that slurped down enormous gulps of plankton-like critters. With that kind of ecology, the shark probably frequented the same type of marine real estate that modern manta rays and devil rays frequent today. The research team responsible for describing the find, which includes Dr. Romain Volau and Dr. Eberhard Frey, made sure to figure out what kind of ecological morphotype the shark would have best fit into. An ecological morphotype would be the general characteristics that convergently evolve due to a shared ecology like filter feeder if we're gonna go super broad in general. When it comes to marine organisms, there's bathic, tachypelagic, achilopelagic, macro-oceanic, micro-oceanic, squatinobenthic, rhinobenthic, and rajobenthic ecologies. They found that Aquilolamna clustered most strongly in the overlap field between an achilopelagic and rajobenthic type of ecology, which basically lines up with how it looks and its similarity with manta and devil rays. Aquilolamna's blade-like pectoral fins are hypothesized to help the creature by acting as stabilizers while swimming. They may also have helped the shark propel itself forward with slow motion flapping motions. It probably depended more on its torpedo-shaped body and strong tail and tail fin to propel itself. This remarkable discovery proves that the sharks continue to diversify into completely odd and different niches throughout their very long history, but also shows that the relatively new Lamniformes group exploded in diversity extremely fast after they first appeared in the earlier Cretaceous. Only more fossils, hopefully with teeth preserved, will enlighten the evolutionary history of this bizarre eagle shark. Make sure you like this video and share it around. Leave a comment if you like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon too if you want to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Pledge to my Patreon at any tier you like for a slew of many delicious offerings. Special thanks to patrons Dinosaur, Natty Cat, Steve Bradshaw, Thais Fenson, Arda Bayer, Ray M, Dana Manchester, Aphid Kirby, and Chris Frampton.